Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are going to try to send a probe to Ceres and then see what we can do after that. Uh, we've got a Jupiter window coming up, but we also still need to continue construction of our ships in Earth orbit. And But last time we did some of that and the previous episode we did some of that, so I wanted to change things up. And here is the Ceres probe. It's just a stack of stages here. We've got a 4 kN thruster there. There's a 30 kN engine there. It's still hyd hypergolic. And then we have a hydrogen oxygen stage here with one of the engines that we've used previously what I call the SE 2040V with uh, really efficient nozzle and uh, otherwise reasonable for us better than our L10. Uh, so we've got this stack here so that the hypergolic stages can capture into orbit around series but this can do the transfer and I hope it all has enough delta V and is configured properly. The catch is that we have to worry about, oh, I thought I had changed that to a high pressure. See, we need hyper high pressure tanks. Um, and also, in this version, even though my engines don't require helium, we need to make sure there's at least one unit of helium because of realism overhaul wanting that now. So, one unit of helium, don't ask me why, but testing has verified that this must be the case. A one unit of helium, high pressure tank, and then these will just hopefully work with that high pressure tank. Uh, nothing untoward has happened. This one, also, I, I swear I did that, but okay. Alright, fine. Let's see here. Good thing I checked. One unit of helium for the high pressure tank, and then uh, we want, we've got all sorts of engines with this stack now, so that's the 4 kilonewton engine one. Okay, so hopefully I've got that right, and then it also has these tanks, but mainly the goal is to get this resource scanner to series. That's what the series probe is all about. And we will scan for resources and then decide what to do next. If series has good resources, we can, you know, use them, hopefully. It might be actually cheaper to get resources from Ceres and then ship them to Mars than to actually drill for them on the surface of Mars and then bring them up. It depends. It's, uh, it's a little bit dicey on that, but it's pretty close. I think if we take a look at the transfer window planner here, Earth, uh, sorry, Ceres to Mars, right? Ceres to Mars. And if we can aerobreak the ship, no, not Saturn, uh, if we can aerobreak the ship at Mars, um, the cost to get to Mars is only 2,700 meters per second. Now the timing might not be great, but that means that there, it costs less delta V. Uh, taking off from series costs a little bit extra, but it's not that much. Um, overall, we it would cost less as long as we can air brake around Mars to actually ship the fuel from Ceres than to bring it up from the surface of Mars. Because bringing up from the surface of Mars takes about 4,200. And launching from Ceres and transferring from Ceres to Mars actually costs less. So, yeah. But the logistics of that is all complicated. It's obviously much easier to get it off of the surface of Mars timing-wise. We are going to launch this to Ceres and see if it has any stuff for us to use. But by the time this gets there, we have to do a whole bunch of other stuff. So, it's delayed gratification of all this. Now, we're using the mini star that I introduced in a video not part of the series but also another video on my YouTube. The mini star is a reusable hydrogen oxygen stage as opposed to non-reusable ones that we've been using. I've made downsized um, Venture Star aerospikes for it. These only get 1163 kilonewtons but that's still quite a lot. Uh, the downside is that these aren't quite as efficient as the engine that we have at the bottom of that stage up there and I would like to have gotten that e efficiency, but when we did the re-entry test with the Mini Star, the, the engines blew up. So I don't want the engines blowing up, so we are going to use these because these have a lot of heat tolerance. They're sized specifically so that they have the right balance, so that they are the same mass as those engines were, the engines that we tested on the Mini Star before in that video. So, but this is the first time we're testing it in this series with the payload, and we're carrying more payload than we did with that video. So here we go, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. 
and launch. Okay, we are passing through Max Q. Everything is very, very bright here. Yeah, I didn't turn as well as I would have liked. Okay, shutting some engines down, rolling. Ah, uh, yeah, we are a little bit short here. Okay, that wouldn't be great for recovery of the Orion carrier plane, but let's just proceed with trying everything else out. Okay, we'll still reserve enough for it to do RCS maneuvers. Okay, RCS on, prograde. Uh, fairings, yeah. That was in fairings. Oh, we still have really weak decoupling. Um, okay, oh, okay, I should have pressed 5 for that one. Uh, it really doesn't have enough to save itself very easily, though. We really, everything was very tight. We need the launch to be better. No, let's try again. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch, alright, 78, okay, passing through max Q, really bright, really bright, you can see I have to keep pretty close to prograde vector to make this efficient, is the thing. Okay. Okay, prograde. Shit, we're controlling from there. Oh, uh. Oh. That's nine degrees rotated. Right. Okay, so the mini star is not going to quite get to orbit, but that should be all right for its recovery as long as we reserve some RCS fuel in it. Uh, okay, we'll reserve that much. That's not a lot though, but it's already on a suborbital trajectory. It automatically reoriented to what it thinks is 90 degrees. Okay, it is in orbit. Let's get the solar panel out. The solar panel is precisely sized to counterbalance the antenna on the other side. Now, we're not doing comms in this save. However, the resource scanner always needs comms. So, yeah. Oh, did I rotate things wrong? Gosh darn it. No! Ah, I wanted this rotated the other way. Eek. We'll ignore that for now. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Okay, anyway, that is the series probe in orbit. We'll catch up with it later. Let's see what happens with this. Wow, we have a lot of extra hydrogen. The fuel mixture... Oh, gosh. The fuel mixture of these engines is different from the fuel mixture of the SE2040Vs that I had on here before. Great. So, yeah. Okay, so we were suboptimal there, too. We probably... We probably could have done better than that. But, alright. Uh, we're here now. Mounce is up a lot. But uh, we're still... Nowhere near Cape Canaveral, of course. Anyway, we are at the point where we must pitch down. Although, the balance is great. But eventually we're going to stall. But the balance is pretty good right now. This is ridiculously ideal. <laughs> but yeah, it, this remains very well balanced. I mean, exceptionally. We don't even need as much pitch authority as we have. Oh, oh, I actually don't want it like that. I think this is time for atmospheric autopilot. Shore is, sounds like it's a slope, <laughs> so I don't know. We should probably descend faster though. 
Well, I'm gonna get the gear out. In this version, that doesn't cause any problems, as far as I know. Flying over Earth's tropics now. Oh! Oh, there's ground. We're apparently in Madagascar right now. Okay, well, we certainly... I swear the pitch is lying to me. Okay. A little, a little bit of a hop there. And we're taking a while to slow down, but that's realistic. It's actually unusually realistic. But... Yes, the Mini Star still works, even from that trajectory, even when it didn't make full orbit, but obviously we couldn't target a particular landing location, but I haven't worked out its re-entry trajectory yet anyway. It's definitely different than the shuttles, so we wouldn't have been able to hit Cape Canaveral this time anyway. I'll work on that separately, but for now, we can recover the Mini Star, so we will. This seems like a really good time to get to Ceres. Yeah, we are... Transferring at our ascending node and reaching at the descending node, so this is perfect. If our timing is right. We've got to send more stuff to series on this opportunity. This is too good. Aha! Okay, and go. <laughs> Okay, well, that is that stage. Yep. Okay. Alright, that's right. Let's see if the next engine works. Oh. We lost the node. Okay, but it works. Oop. Maybe we can just do a correction right now. Okay, we have an encounter. Alright. Well, that's good enough. We better do that now. We're almost too late. But no mid-course adjustment necessary. Yeah, we shouldn't get into an equatorial orbit. We'll have to do polar. But this is okay for now. Okay, so we'll meet up with it when it gets into Series SOI. I have decided that I would like to put Pekka's Starship to use and send a larger payload to Series since it seems like a very good opportunity to send things to Series. And what I wanted to do was send an ISRU unit to accompany our resource scanner so it can land on the location that resource scanner finds and start drilling immediately. But as you can see, our ISRU unit is set up horizontally, that's so it doesn't topple, right? Uh, because otherwise I'll topple it. And with its stages, it doesn't quite fit in Starship. And I've tried to be efficient about this. This is an ion engine unit here. And then this is a very flat pancakey sort of stage for this Hydrolox engine. I could probably tighten it up a little bit, but the big problem is obviously the layout of the ISRU unit. Um, I'll see what I can do. Well, I have done my best to try to pack it in. I moved the Xenon stage over here, but there's no way we're getting it out of there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just not going to clear the bay there and it's clipping over here. So I think we'll send supplies instead, instead of the ISRU unit for now, because I do want to use Starship in this case. But ultimately, I think this assembly will have to go on Kasei instead of Starship, but I want to fly Starship once, so uh, we'll probably tighten up the stage and just send maybe 10 tons of supplies, which should be able to work out, and we can probably make the supply container a little bit smaller than the ISRU unit, of course. Okay, it's in there, sort of. Uh, we've got the supply container there, of course, docking port, and then this is the core for NTP and solar electric propulsion that I've used on the big ships as well, except we only partially fill it with xenon gas. We are nowhere near its capacity for that. 
Instead, we're taking up the volume with extra hydrogen and oxygen for our Hydrolox engine there. And we've got additional Hydrolox tanks here, but the, a decoupler that has crossfeed enabled right now so that all that can be dumped off because ultimately we'll be using our ion engines. And you know, that's going to work out perfectly because ion engine burns are great. But anyway, we are going to try this out. It, it's still, I don't know if it's gonna clear the bay very easily. So that's a good question. I had to rotate it in this particular way because otherwise if these tanks were on this side, it definitely would not clear the bay. So yeah, the Starship tighter than I thought it would be. Okay, so let's close that cargo bay and let us see if we can get this done. It's a little over 90 tons, the payload, and that may or may not be difficult for Starship as we are reserving the propellants. It's uh, partly because of the residual propellants, and I think the dry mass estimates for Starship and Super Heavy are actually including the residuals, and, uh, well, the dry masses that we have here might not be so well are not uh, so I think that's the issue then why we're not getting the payload capacity we ought to but there might be other factors like uh, suboptimal launch tra trajectory but in order to get the super heavy back to the Cape I don't know if the or not Cape uh, Boca Chica I don't know if there's any other way to go about it Okay, let's try this out. I've got a KOS script for Starship that will make sure that we reserve the right amount of fuel for Super Heavy. I've tested out Super Heavy with that um, reserve amount and we can get it back to Boca Chica, though it's close. <laughs> it's close. We're trying to use as much as possible. This is with payload. This is not a without payload sort of launch, so it's tricky. And need some changes here all right okay and that's disabled okay when you press P atmospheric autopilot gets enabled so important Alright, we are off. Well, we're definitely past the speed of sound. And things are proceeding. It does throttle down a little bit more through Max Q and everything. And throttles back up a little bit there. I set the throttle to what they were planning on based on the test launch, but that might not be appropriate for having a payload. Might want a higher thrust level. This is required, otherwise, it won't even get to the point where they were supposed to shut off Super Heavy according to their schedule. It would run out of propellant early. So, yeah, we definitely need to thrall down. And the staging is based on their timing during the test launch, their planned timing during the test launch, of course. Alright, that is the Super Heavy shutdown. Uh, I'm not going to activate the Super Heavy script, we'll just let things proceed. I could have it turn around, but I'll just pass on that. Alright, we are continuing on. Okay, the sea level engines are off. Uh, it's pitching down a lot. Oh no. Um, I'm turning them back on again by force. Um, but, okay, I've shifted the center of mass a little bit and it looks like shifting the center of mass is too much. So, yeah, the point of shifting the center of mass was to try and simulate the heat shields, uh, uh, the heat tiles, but that clearly isn't going to be good. Uh, so we'll have to try to figure out some other way of doing that. So it's off to one side here, but it's obviously too much for the RCS to hold. 
Oh well. Uh, we'll be somewhat less efficient, but we'll still get to orbit. I will readjust that. The reason for simulating the mass of the heat tiles on one side is uh, because of re-entry. To see if that has an effect on re-entry. Okay, we are in orbit. Now let's see if we can get the stuff out. So, 667 with the payload in. Should be more than a thousand meters per second without it. Okay. Yeah, make sure we're controlling from here. And that is the payload adapter. Yeah, we need to go backwards. Uh, I might need to uh, time warp that thing out. Well, no rotation. Yeah. I think I better do that before it breaks, so time warping. Well, however long it takes to clear us. Okay. Oh, don't whack it. Don't whack it. Oh. Yeah, I want more than 1,000 left. Okay, retrograde, please. This thing sure is nimble now. Yeah, we're just gonna dispose of this starship. And that'll do it. Alright. We'll have to work on re-entry there later. Actually, only 88 tons. So, yeah, still need to optimize things. We do have two nuclear reactors on each of the ion engine pods. We have the ion engines and then the hydrolock stage there. It is boiling off. And then we have a little bit of xenon gas here and then the supplies and the docking port. Let's try and get it over to series. There we go, we've got an encounter. We can adjust that later. We're going to need to because we're going to need the ion engines to do some of this. I morphed a little bit vigorously there. And go. Sure, that totally won't throw anything off. But then again, still, the ion engines are going to throw everything off much more than that. Well, we are at least on escape. with this stage, but we're not quite turned towards where we need to be as it runs out. Maybe we should have overcompensated for that with this stage or something. I don't know if that works particularly well. Okay, here we go, trying to separate the hydrolox portion of this. Well, the ion engines are pushing us somewhat. Well, maybe, maybe not. Well, it says zero thrust, which is worrisome. Oh, it's the RCS that's pushing us. Uh, we might have a ion engine issue here. Ah, uh, these aren't working right. They're not producing thrust. I think what it's a weird quirk. It's a quirk that probably shouldn't exist, but uh, the quirk is that for some reason they don't like to produce thrust when there's no solar panel. Now, we've got nuclear reactors here and it can generate power, obviously, otherwise, uh, well, it'd be pointless. But uh, despite the fact that it can generate power, they don't work unless there's a solar panel. I don't understand it. I don't understand it, but I forgot about that. Uh, I knew about it in 1.8.1, but I didn't really think about it here. So, we've got a bit of a problem here. This is just going to be lost, I think. Well, that's a shame. At least we got to sort of test out the Starship initially here in this install. But this isn't going to get to series. I think I'll try in the next episode to at least launch the ISR unit on the Kasei rocket which will have the space in its fairing for that. And then we'll continue to construct our ships that will bring Kerbals over to Mars. But 
Yeah, well, this supply vessel wasn't critical anyway. I'll have to double check that that's the problem here. It may or may not be, but I suspect that that's what the problem is. That weird aspects of KSP Interstellar power generation mean that this thing needs solar panels, <laughs> even though it's got nuclear reactors. So, yeah. I'll double check that, but with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.